Hi, my name is Les Benedict. I'm the Assistant Director for the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe Environment Division. I'm also a New York State Certified Hunter Education Instructor. And I'm here today with my nephew, David Tracy, to go over firearm safety. And we're gonna go over the 10 Commandments of Firearm Safety point by point so that folks can get, gain a better understanding of how to safely handle a firearm. We're primarily gonna be using um, long, long arms today. I wanted to point out that what we're using are inert firearms. These firearms are non-firing. They're used in a hunter education program to build confidence and to build trust with the students. And the first uh, commandment is muzzle control. And muzzle control, control is actually controlling the direction of the end of the firearm barrel to ensure that this is pointed in a safe direction. Wherever the firearm is pointed is actually where the firearm will discharge to or shoot towards, whether it's intentional or accidental. The next commandment is treating every firearm as, as if it's loaded. Uh, if, you, if you're treating this as if it's loaded, your safety will always be on, okay? And the next thing is that if I were to hand this off to David or David were to hand that off to me, uh, we have to treat each firearm as if it's loaded. But I would need to prove it to him to make sure that it's clear that there's no projectile in there before I would hand it off to him. Is that unloaded? Yep, that is unloaded. Okay, can you open the action? There we go. Okay, so we'll open up the action. We can see that it's clear. Now we're going to talk about um, a very important commandment, which is making sure of your target and what's beyond. Obviously, when you're shooting at nighttime, you have no idea of what's beyond your target because it's dark out. So the next commandment is making sure that your finger is where? Away from the trigger. Okay, away from the trigger. And the reason for that is this, if your finger were on the trigger and the safety was off, and if you were to accidentally trip and your finger were to strike the trigger, it could accidentally discharge. So until you're ready to shoot, your finger should be outside the trigger guard. The next one is understanding um, the firearm and the types of ammunition that they, that they use. For instance, I have uh, two types of cartridges here uh, that could be used in this firearm. However, um, each cartridge has a head stamp on its base that shows you what the caliber is and what rifle it should be used in. Close up of the firearm um, and where you can see the firearm, firearm information that tells you uh, what caliber bullet or gauge cartridge to use in a, in a firearm. What gauge shotgun is this, David? And this is a 12 gauge. Okay. So if you were to accidentally load the improper size shell, the 20 gauge, it's gonna go right down the barrel. And if you didn't know, if you say forgot that you had put the wrong size ammunition in and then put the right size in and you were to fire this, you'd have a catastrophic failure and it could potentially kill you. So you need to understand the uh, firearm, the type of cartridges that it takes, and um, you can get that information from the, as I said, from the barrel and from the ammunition. The next thing I wanna talk about is um, unloading a firearm when it's not in use and making it safe. I'm gonna add that onto it. Um, trigger lock, and we're gonna demonstrate how these can be used. Uh, storing a firearm, whether you're taking it to, to the field to hunt with, or whether you're storing it. Again, you gotta make sure that the firearm is empty, and you should actually leave the action open. I'm gonna show you where this trigger lock goes 
to make sure that this thing is not accidentally uh, discharged or used by any, anyone that we don't want to have access to it. So that simply provides us with a measure of safety. The, the next point goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning, which is controlling the muzzle. Only point the firearm at something that you intend to shoot. And one of the things I wanted to mention about that is that sometimes these are fitted with scopes. And sometimes some hunters might have the idea of trying to scope out a target with the rifle scope. But the problem with that is that when you're using that scope for targeting, you're also pointing that rifle at something that you're not really sure of. The next um, point to make sure that you don't run, you don't jump, or you don't climb with a loaded firearm. David, could you talk, talk about how you would make sure that you safely would climb a tree stand, either up or down, uh, with a firearm? Uh, with a tree stand, you definitely would want to have at least some type of string that you would bring with you. In this case, if you're climbing a 15 or 20 foot tree stand, uh, you want to make sure that the rifle is unloaded and make sure the action is also open. And when you climb up the tree stand, you're going to take the string that you've actually tied off to the rifle. So if this was the rifle, you'd want to tie the string tightly around the, the stock right here. Make sure it's nice and tight so it's not going to fall off. And then you want to lay it on the ground like so. So when you start to pull the gun up, if you wanted to, you could lay a piece of unused clothing that you take out in the field. So that way that it doesn't get any obstructions in the barrel. And once you're up in the tree stand, you'll lift the gun up. And then as you pull it up, the stock will be facing you, not the barrel. Now one of the last points we're gonna talk about is um, storage cases. This is actually a storage case. It's meant more for taking firearms into the field. It's meant to provide some protection for the rifle um, in, in its transport. There are some hard shell cases that can be locked. But in either case, you wanna, wanna make sure um, that your firearms and your ammunition are stored separately. And the reason for that is because it prevents any sort of an accident um, having anybody have access to your firearms and loading it. So <clears throat> for storing safely, you would make sure that the action is open, that it's on safety, and you can actually store this in a case with the action open. no ammunition in there, and it would be stored separately. Now the last point is something that um, is pretty important, and it's making sure that you're not hunting or using firearms under the influence of alcoholic beverages or any other type of drug, even prescription or non-prescription. It could lead to an accident.